Hey everybody, here we have a Bestec ATX 250 12E power supply. I just poured out of this e-machine system, and amazingly, the motherboard still works. It works just fine, actually. The only issue I had with it was a dead CMOS battery. But then again, it's a 12-year-old machine, so it's kind of obvious. I mean, there it sits right over there. <laughs> completely original machine actually and it works just fine tried it with a different power supply in a previous video and works great so we're gonna take the cover off this power supply and look at the um at the destruction this thing unleashed on itself back who knows when so get ready okay but let's pull the screws out of the um now the casing. Now let's take a look at the label here. This is actually an earlier Best Tech ATX 250 12E. It's got the bigger labeling in the bold Best Tech logo. Easily from 2002 or even as early as 2001. As you can see, it's a um, it's a older design with a minus 5 volt rail and not too much amperage output on the 12 volt rail, despite the fact that it was powering. A 12 volt oriented motherboard. Well, at least you know the CPU got its power from 12 volts. So, that for ado, let's go ahead and pull the cover off. You guys have a look at this. <laughs> you need some help? Seeing it? Look here. See something missing there? <laughs> have a look at that. Jeez. <clears throat> this one used um, JPC TUR caps in it. And look how clean this thing is. The owner, I must say, has had a history of keeping her computers nice and clean. I mean, this thing looks like it's <laughs> not that old. <clears throat> I mean, if I wanted to take the time to literally build another 5 volt standby rail on this thing I mean it'd be worth repairing look how clean it is all the caps except for the ones that were in the 5 volt standby circuit um, look okay <clears throat> I don't see any bulging ones in various places but look at there <laughs> see that capacitor <laughs> look at there that's the one that used to go over here these bass sacks have been known for failing in this manner I mean no kidding they've been known to fail like this you know the the, the 5 volt standby goes over voltage and it literally self destructs <laughs> the circuit literally blowing caps off of the board now this will be the first time I say it blow um, C50 off the board usually it's C1 that gets blown off it's sometimes C50 but it's funny, C1 is still there, but C50 is obviously <laughs> gone. What's right there? Yeah, guys. You know, this one here, does, I mean, <clears throat> I can honestly see why the motherboard is okay. Um, I mean, you can tell there's been some damage here, but I don't see it. It doesn't look nearly as burnt as what I've seen on some. <clears throat> Now, if you want to have a look at this, let me show you something. You see the glue that they use in these older models? That yellowish looking stuff? Well, what happens is the heat, over time, turns it black. And when it gets black, it actually conducts. You see the trace of black right there at the bottom on the PCB. Next to what appears to be a zener diode and a capacitor. I see a, you know, I see, I see a stretch of black right there. And that's probably conductive. I mean, this Bass Tech is so old that it literally has the the PCB is like silk screen for a two diode to um for the um four diode treatment, <laughs> and they had to you know bend the legs of the rectifier bridge to fit them in, just like I would on a cheap power supply if I was modifying it. Yeah, isn't this crazy? <clears throat> What 
Which, speaking of, you know, I might just go grab a newer 250-12E and just show it to you. Just for an example here. Okay, everybody, here is the other one I was mentioning of. This power supply, I've already... I've, uh, it's funny, I took the fan out and used it in a different power supply, but... This is the 250-12E that I pulled out of my parents' ink machines back in... I guess 2007 or 2008. No, it'd be 2007. I pulled this out. And it's still in working condition. It wasn't. It wasn't in a state of failure just yet. How and you and you can't even tell. Um, the final standby circuit on this one hasn't even started to fail yet. It's not even showing signs of of heat stress. <clears throat> but if you take a look at this one, you can see the the difference in the design. You can see the rectifier bridge on this one just simply has a spot for it. It wasn't jerry-rigged in there, it just simply soldered it right in. All legs straight. And this one is, um, this one has Jamicon caps in it. I would say this particular unit was made in <clears throat> probably 2003 or 2004. I want to say 2003. Also, this one here looks just fine. But, yeah, that right there, <clears throat> that bridge rectifier, that's the first time I've seen one like that on a Best Tech. Then again, I think it's the oldest 250-12V I've ever popped a cover off of either. Now, you can clearly see it's a two-transistor design. In regards to the file standby rail, you can see there's a second transistor on that primary heat sink. Same as here. Now, if you was to look at a Best Tech ATX 25012Z, which is the compact model, the ATX 312E E Machines unit, or the ATX 312Z compact model, you wouldn't see that trend, that second transistor on your main heatsink because those units use an IC control file with standby rail. <clears throat> now, see, so many people get confused with the best tech naming, thinking that all 12E units are bad. It's only these here, the 2512E. 2512E, that's the only one that is a motherboard killer. The rest of them are safe. I must say, this will make a nice sorts of parts. Considering how everything looks decent in here. I mean, other than <laughs> the uh, failed 5 volt standby rail. But the way the 5 volt standby rail on this one failed, I do believe, is what saved that motherboard from dying. And it's not often, it's really not often that you find them, you know, fail like this where it actually does not take out your motherboard. Most of these do take out your motherboard when they go. <clears throat> now see another design difference here. If you look on the secondary side heatsink, you can see all the rectifiers are bolted to the side facing the transformers. Whereas on this one, the rectifier for I believe um, probably the 3.3 volts is facing toward you know the other side. I'm not sure if that's 5 volt, 3.3 volt, or 12 volt. Um, probably not 12 volt. Because back in these days, 12 volt was not the primary um, rail. Despite you know many of these power supplies getting put into systems oriented that way. Anyways, there's your good look at that unit. Yeah, if I come over here, is a good look at this one. So, anyways, any questions or comments? Feel free to ask, and thanks for watching.